Hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to say welcome to the Radiating Women Network panel conversation, which we are having in commemoration of the Women's Day celebration today. And uh, today I am going to be hosting four amazing women, four um, beautiful and phenomenal women who will be sharing with us their life experiences um, as we glean um, and, and we dissect the dynamism of womanhood. And we also, you know, learn from the experiences on how, as women, we can navigate the different facets of womanhood. And so with me today, um, like I said, are four amazing women. Um, so we'll just introduce ourselves. I'll start with myself. I am Deborah Babatunde, and I am your host for this panel conversation. Can we meet you, ma? Okay, so my name is Chidi Maiweze, and I'm a logistics uh, person. I'm actually the head of logistics for Lafarge Africa PLC where I majorly just manage the distribution of cement across um, the six states in southwest Nigeria. Good morning. Good morning, and we are happy to have you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dorcas Adifolaju. I'm a lawyer. I am a state council. I work with the Ogun State Government. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to have you on set. Hello, everyone. My name is Fashion Lois. I am a medical doctor and also an entrepreneur. I run a transportation business with my husband. All right, thank you. We're happy to have you. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Olubumi Madukwe. I'm an administrative officer slash finance. I work with a uh, German corporation, GIZ. All right, thank you. We are, I'm so happy to have all of you on set. And like I said earlier, we are having this conversation in commemoration of the Women's Day celebration. And this year, our theme for the year as women is the adorned woman, the adorned woman. And so we will be looking um, at what it means to be adorned as a woman. Um, and, you know, in preparation for this com um, panel conversation, something that struck me as I was looking at the lives of these wonderful women that we have on stage is that they have so many facets, so many aspects of their lives that they are having to manage all at the same time. And they're excelling, they're thriving, and you know, they're blossoming at what they're doing. And so today we'll be looking at how are they able to navigate the different parts of their lives? How are they able to still, you know, put things together and still, you know, take over territories for God in the different phases of lives that they occupy? And so I'll be asking them um, a couple of questions and we'll be sharing um, in your life experiences. So please let's make it as practical um, as we can. So I'd like to start with Barista Dockers, okay? So I know that you're a lawyer and uh, like you said, you work with the Ogun State um, 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 Government. I also know that you're a mother of uh, two teenage daughters, am I right? Okay, excellent. Yeah, so I would like to, would like to know, I mean, get a, a glimpse into your life, if you don't mind. How are you able to maintain balance, you know, between your work and your family life as a lawyer, who is also a mother and, you know, a wife? How are you able to navigate that space and uh, would like to um, you know focus more on like your social life your faith life and then of course your family life so can you share with us how do you maintain balance thank you very much um, I would start by saying it all starts with your vision your vision as a woman or as a girl or a teenager a lady way 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 before the children come I, I will say it starts with that vision. What do you see? What do you visualize your home to be? How do you visualize your children to be? What kind of setting do you, do you see? I mean, it all starts with the vision. For me, um, there's a scripture that comes to mind. It's in Abacom that says that um, make, make, write down the vision on, upon tab tab tables and make it plain. So that the men that read it will run with it. And for me, that is where it starts from. It's like an artist that's wants, that wants to draw, wants to put up a drawing. He has to see it. He has to visualize it. He has to see what he wants to draw. So while he's drawing it, and it's, when he's not taking the shape he wants it to take, he can say, oh, no, no, this is not it. This is not it. So he takes that eraser and he, and he modifies it. He corrects it. So it starts with a vision. What do you see? How do you see your home? That is the starting point. Now, when you become a mother, it has now gone beyond the vision now. It's happening. 
You remember the Bible says that that vision is for an appointed time. Your being a mother to the children God has given to you is for an appointed time. Not when I say appointed time, it means that from the time they are born up until when they leave you, really that's when you can groom those children. That's when you, you can sow seeds that will manifest. That is when the seeds will you know, will, will germinate or the, the seeds will probably germinate way after that, but that's the sowing period. So it is for an appointed time. So now that you have those children, what do you do? Your question is how to balance it. There really has to be a balance. You need to know when to wake up. You need to know what time the children are to get to school. You need to know what you're going to do when they get back from school. You need to know those little, little things. And then you need to plan for it. Because without planning, you will surely fail. Putting all things together, time management is important. Now you're dealing with motherhood. We're not talking being a wife now, we're talking motherhood. It is important that the children that God has given to you, that you nurture them. Nurturing takes a lot. Nurturing is not, I've just given birth. Nurturing is care. Nurturing is preservation. So you need to be able to do that. Time management is key. That is the first thing I would say. Plan your, plan your time. Know the kind of job you do. Know how to... And then you need to know how to delegate. You need to know how to delegate. And when delegating, you don't do it without love. Sometimes you are not available for the children. Sometimes they call for meetings, you are not there. Sometimes the children are having rehearsals or they're having presentations in school, you are not there. You don't just say, mommy can't make it. You let that child know, I would love to be there. I would love to see you perform. But unfortunately, I cannot be there. Who would you like to come to your school? Would you like Auntie Tolu to come to your school? Would you like Uncle Gabriel to be there for you? You need to make that child know that the decision you're taking is important. That child's decision is also important. So you don't just say, I'm not going to be there. You need to be available for the child emotionally and physically. You also talked about um, a your, faith. Your, yeah, your faith life. My faith life, or the faith life of a woman. The faith life, if you ask me, is, um, is in doing. It's in doing. Um, the Bible says that um, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction or the evidence of things not seen. Now, it's in doing. When the children see that you are practiced, and who do we have faith in before I go there? We have faith in God. And faith in God means what? It means trust. It means belief. It means loyalty. So when the children see that you exhibit trust in God, when they see that your belief in God is unchanging, is unshakable, if you say the God is going to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, you have made that confession. The children have heard you. You have confessed that. You do not go behind to begin to practice something else. So faith, if for me, is in doing. So the children see that your belief is intact, your, your trust is intact, your loyalty is intact. When they see these things, they copy. They know that, oh, I remember when I, when I used to, many years ago, when my children were really um, small, and I'm watching films with them, um, it gets to a point, maybe they show uh, a lady getting married, you know, in the film, and then I just begin to, I, I, you know, I'm praying and I'm prophesying and I'm saying, oh, this, I will see this, this will be my portion in the name of Jesus, you know. And you know, initially, they used to look at me funny. Like, you can't watch a film with mommy. You can't watch her. Well, because once she sees something, she just begins to claim it. She begins to, you know, I, I forget that, oh, it's a film. 
I just see that and I want it. And I begin to speak the word. I begin to, you know, claim these things. And I found out that, you know, in recent times, when my children watch films and they see things, you know, unconsciously, they also say, oh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So I think it's in, in, in doing. I think in doing, we we'll, we'll teach faith and um, the children will... Um, do well okay, to follow thanks. yes all right thank you so much for that response but you haven't told us about how you balance your social life in the oh. middle of all of this oh well um well i think social well for me personally uh that might not be a question that because i really know I don't. <laughs> you don't have a social my life. social life is zero oh, wow. but <laughs> thank you for that confession <laughs> Well, I'm sure somewhere somebody will be able to. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I would allow um, Mrs. Madukwe to jump in on that. So, can you tell us? I mean, how do you how do you manage your social life? Do you have a social life? Let me ask that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Right. Um, since we're keeping it real, we're keeping it practical. The truth is that I don't have a social life either. Okay. Yes, um, I'm saying that because honestly. There is no one size fits all mm. to these things. Mm. And um, each family differs, mm. you know. Um, she has spoken a lot. She talked about time management. Yeah. Fantastic. She talked about faith. I also want to say that all of these things, the doing comes with discipline. Mm. You see, okay. when you uh, attain a level of discipline, naturally consistency comes to you. Because uh, it's easy to start off something very easy however how are you keeping up you know uh the children for me <laughs> for me the children they basically watch you i mean up to the bathroom i have kids that will come with me when they were very little years ago they would want to be everywhere you are they are watching you they are seeing you so it's what you do you can you can only do so much with words you know bring them to church when you go back, they are watching you. So, so for me, discipline, consistency, and it's a work in progress. Pastor mentioned earlier this morning about uh, women evolving. You know, I got to a certain level, and I just knew that I am evolving. I called my husband. I said, I'm changing. I'm, I'm, I'm metamorphosing. I just know that things can't go on the same way it's been going, and then we expect to see a change. I mean, this is me now. I'm talking personally. Mm -hmm. So finding a balance, you can't have it all. Yeah. That's the truth. Nobody has it all. If it's either you want to sacrifice that time, you know, for the home front and uh, face your career and know that your social life is maybe two over ten. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get what I mean? But uh, that you want to have a social life, you want to be able to handle the home front, and your career you're also doing well then probably uh maybe it's not absolutely impossible but probably you have help mm. you have you have help from the outside mm. i didn't have that uh, opportunity so it's been me and the kids you know and just the family yeah. so there's no there's no one size fits all like i said mm. the balance is just prioritizing for me you know i prioritize what i deem important by the help of the Holy Spirit, you know, what I did important, where I need to go. It's not like you don't even get invitations to uh, social gatherings for them. How important is it? Is it going to affect, you know, my kids being home alone? Do I have help? I mean, the help that I can trust. So there's really no um, balance for me other than prioritizing and deciding, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to go for. Me, yes, you can eat your cake and have it can have everything on the balance thank you thank you thank you very much so um well it's amazing to hear that we do not have um we do not have social lives <laughs> i'm going to ask dr fash do you do you have a social life i think i do to an extent because <laughs> okay, you think i'm you newly married so okay. i think i don't have so many commitments like <laughs> the other married women here so um i'm just gonna say just like she said i think this Every phase comes with adjustments. You know that there are demands. There's this that I have to do. I have this job. I have this business. I have my husband. I have my friends. I have my family. So for me, 
it's like I dedicate time to check on family and friends. Sometimes I don't have this luxury of calling all of them. But probably I'm just going through my WhatsApp status. I see a family member status and it's funny. I just reply with a smiley. Ah, how have you been? No, longest time. That is me checking on the person. And also my friends too. Because, you know, some people will be like, ah, now that she's now married, married. <laughs> she doesn't have friends yeah. again. She doesn't want to relate with people. And really, it's not like that. Mm. So sometimes, as the Holy Spirit drops some people's names in my heart. Because like I said, I can't check up on everybody. Yeah, you can be but um, there's this thing with me. And my husband knows. When somebody is consistently on my mind, I place a call to, to the person. I'm like, how are you? You came to mind. How are you doing? And most, most of the time, the person tells me that this has been happening, that has been happening. Thank you for calling. You know? Then sometimes, once in a while, we have outings. Maybe friends invite us for birthdays, weddings. We can't go for all of them. But the ones that we can, we go for. The ones that we can support with our money, we support with. The ones that we can call and wish them well, check up on them along the process of preparation for that event. Because I realize that many times, it's not just about physically attending those events. It's about, it's about what you can, the value you can offer to that person's life. Not necessarily the money you can give. Some of these people actually have the money. But to some people, checking on them just to presence. just know how is this yeah. going. I'm sorry I can't make it, but I just want to ask how is the preparation going. Hope you are not worked out. Is there anything you want me to pray about? I'll have you in my prayers. You know, I feel like there are, there are dynamics to this social life that can make people know that you are actually a part of their life without actually physically being there with them. Mm. You understand? Take, for example, you have a family abroad. You may not be able to travel abroad every weekend, but, you know, checking on them, checking on their children, giving them advice. So I think that's how... I maintain you my can. own social life. And when I can physically go for any social life. Then you make yourself um, available. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, impute. And so, Mrs. Iwese, <laughs> do you also not have a social life? Sorry, we're, we're staying so long on this social life thing. But I feel like um, I've, I've interacted with a lot of women. And I see them struggle for balance, right? Um, you know, before marriage, they were like the life of the party. You know, they were always, you know, glam and glitz and all of that. But then after marriage, it's like, boom, you know, <laughs> it's like they lose it all. And, you know, like, like she rightly said, you have friends, you know, that will now be saying, ah, is it because you are now, you know, is it because you're now married and all of that? So do you have a social life? I, I like the fact that she has brought um, a perspective into what. Um, social life means to her. So it basically means keeping in touch with her friends. And I believe um, we, we also do that, Barista Dockers and um, Mrs. Madukwe as well. But beyond just keeping in touch with friends, do you, do you have that, um, that social life? You, you know what social life is, right? <laughs> you know, are you usually out there, um, you know, and are you able to balance that with your, um, with your family and, you know, your faith life and all of that? I will say that. I will say that, um, and I'll say yes and no to okay. that question. Yes and no. <laughs> um, okay, maybe more yes than no. Okay. Maybe my, my social life is probably about six or seven over ten. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and um, I achieve this by combining my social life and my work life. Okay, okay. so I work in a very male-dominated environment, mm -hmm. right? So I'm probably. Um, one lady in the midst of eight, you know, logistics, it's chalk drive, it's all sorts. So, um, what I tried to do from day one, and then, yeah, because you're right, as a single person, I was up and about, <laughs> life of the party yeah. and all that. And then you start working, and then you, you know, you get into marriage, and there are all sorts of things being thrown at you. So one of the things I look out for, and again, the workplace is really, it's not like it's the place where you go looking for friends, right? Your, your primary relationship are colleagues. However, I try to see, identify within the workspace, people that I have shared values with, so that while I'm at work, I'm also at play. Because personally, like I said to my children, I work very hard. And I also play very hard. And in between, you can't tell really when I'm working and playing because somehow I like <laughs> what I have done, and, and that's how I maintain even mental balance. Mm. Because sometimes you are pressured, there's too much. 
we can just break out in the workplace. I'm like, you know what, guys, guys, because there's a lot of guys. I'm like, okay, everybody, can we take a few steps back? Can we um, put some music? Can we walk and play? Do you understand? Yeah. And then it also doesn't impact the small time I have at home. Mm. So I combine work and play, mm. more or less. Um, what I used to do with my team, um, when I became a team lead, okay. again, like we said, distance transition. Yeah. How it was as a junior staff is no longer how it is as yeah. you grow in your career. When I became a team lead, every Friday, and I, my, my staff, they know, on Fridays, 12 o'clock, transport team we have closed for the day. So we try to do, do all the work. Monday to Thursday, we're working really hard, crazy, crazy. Friday, we come, knock out what needs to be knocked out. We are out. It can be ice cream. It's really not a lot. It can be just ice cream and I'm buying. After a while, my colleagues started to say, oh, I'm buying next time. I'm buying next time. Before you knew it, I mean, it became a family. Yeah. How does that, it also not helps the work. Because genuinely, the guys, the team know you care about them, right? They know that when I put the pressure on you Monday to Thursday. It is, is, is work. Yeah. On Friday, we can let our hair down. Mm -hmm. You know, we can have ice cream. And then I have also found that on Fridays are the times when I come up, when the team comes up with the best innovations, best creativity. Suddenly something just pops up in the middle of ice cream or, or pizza or something. So that's why I say, you can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. If you look at me from outside, you can say, oh no, because you will not find me in any social gathering as apart from my colleagues and my friends at work i don't have a lot of friends i don't have yeah. any socials outside work but i can tell you that within the work that's the only way to maintain sanity in the industry that i work excellent excellent thank you so much for that and i think i really do agree with you that you could actually work hard <laughs> And you can still, play, you know, yeah. play hard. And I think I also buy into the idea of, you know, even within your workspace, you can still try to create fun, right? Even though I also know that one needs to also throw in caution. But, you know, you have to look at the environment where you work too. Um, because sometimes, you know, you don't want to mix work and, and pleasure so you don't get burnt in the end. But I feel like there's still that point you can get to and then you could try to find the balance in between. I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm in your shoes as well where in the middle of work, I still try to, you know, okay, can we find, you know, this little time? Sometimes on Fridays after work, we just say, you know what? We're going out and then we go out, you know, we relax and then we're able to regain, you know, that strength. And like you said, it's in the middle of that relaxation that even great ideas, you know, they pop up because people are really relaxed. Um, relaxed. So since we've dwelt a lot on social life, I would still want to dwell on that a bit and ask. Even though we've said that we do not have social lives, I, I want to agree, I, I want to believe that now that answer has changed because we now sort of understand what it means to have a social life. But then I would like to ask, um, and I think I'll direct this question to Mrs. Madukwe, right? So how do you unwind? Do you, do you, or let me, let me ask like this, how do you know when you are at your breaking point, when you feel like, you know what, I've had enough? <laughs> or have you ever had those moments where you're just like, you know what, the world should go off. I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm tired. If yes, how do you know those times and how do you unwind when you find yourself at those junctions in life? Um, how do I unwind? How do I know when it's time for me to just break out and just be on my own? Um, like I said, personally, I've not been the type that has been graced with having a lot of help around me so um the first time i needed this break i didn't know that was what i needed i was just fed up i was emotional i was i was just unhappy and um i didn't want to see anybody my husband the kids you guys you are, st I'm, you are stressing me i just need a break so thank god for um a very good friend okay. she's a lawyer as well i reached out to her we share the same faith i reached out to her and um she told me to come over and um that was a very first time so subsequently you know as you grow older like i said even your um need to break out and where you chose to go to differs do you understand so uh, for me there are times when I just lock up myself in the room and I'm listening to music, okay. you know, dancing, mm -hmm. worshipping, praying, 
and there are other times when it's just that I'm a lot joint that I've okay. been hearing about <laughs> that I want to go. I don't okay. want to cook. I don't want to do anything. I just want to go down there. I want to feed myself and just, you know, get fed mm. because I don't want to eat what I've prepared. Mm. Then there are other times when maybe I just want to go to somewhere alone okay. with my husband okay. and then I try to my kids are old enough, they are teenagers, so you guys, we're, we're, having, we're having daddy and mommy time. You guys should handle the house. Thank you. Bye. So, for me, basically, it's, it's an individual thing. There is, no, there is no yardstick for this thing. I keep saying that there is no one size fits all. This ice cream she mentioned, there are days when I just finish up from work. I'm not going home. I just eat somewhere and just chill. Just chill, yeah. just relax. There, there hasn't been, the very first time, like I said, I didn't know that was what I needed. I just reached out to someone and you know, she just told me, just calm yourself down. You can't, you can't be cool. And, and that's, that's the need for me. All right, thank you very much. I think something I can pick from what you said is the need for us to be self-aware as women. I, I think, do you agree with me? You have to really be self-aware because like she said, there's no one cap fits all. So you can't say, oh, um, it's when you are at this point that you know that, okay, you are getting to that breaking point. You have to study yourself and know when, you know, it's, it's that time. So I'm still asking you, um, Mrs. Weze, so how do you unwind? You know, um, what are the kind of things you do to take care of yourself, you know, the me time kind of thing? Okay. So the, I think one of the things that helped me is that, so I grew up in the middle of men. I'm an only girl. And I'm a last born. Okay. So I grew up with the boys playing ball. Mm. So I used to go outside and, and join watch and watch them play ball. <laughs> but as an adult, one of the things I like is football. Okay. So you see, I don't have dull moments in the weekends. Yeah. And I'm an, an Arsenal fan, so I will watch football. Okay. That's steady. <laughs> and I will binge on football news all week. Okay. So <laughs> I as find of, that interesting. Yeah. Yeah, oh and, and self-awareness for me started quite early. I think mm. that the gap I had between my brothers also helped me. There, there were things that okay. they, they, you know, they told me early. Mm. You know, uh, maybe I found them and their, their girlfriends then, and they'll try to explain to me that ah, this is how women behave when mm. they are moody and all that. So I, I got quite aware, self-aware early. Mm. So what do I do? My kids know eight to nine every day. I watch. I have television time. Sorry, you're pitying me. It's, it's PM, I, you mean? 8 p.m. in the night. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I watch African Magic Showcase. I know that people okay. say it's African Magic. And I follow, you know, all those things. It's Dilemma or, or you know, it's my... There are too many too many programs in yeah. Itura or Convenant. Sorry. Those, pro, those two <laughs> programs that they do every day, 8 to 9. I watch it. And they know. They just open the door of the room and they'll be like, ah. It's mommy's TV time. <laughs> or oh, my daughter will say it's what. So, this, that's what I do. Because I spend so much time at work. Mm. I go out in the morning. I come, at, mm. I come back in the evening. I spend a few times trying to um, look at what the kids have mm. done. And I think I was also blessed. Again, one of the things I say is if you, are, if you can find a good help mm. early, it's important. I don't think I'm not in the in the school of thoughts that say women must do everything themselves. themselves. I don't think it is fair mm. with the kind of, you know, especially when now that women are evolving, are getting involved in things, so in things. career and all yeah. that. I think that as much as possible, explore getting help. Mm. I have been blessed with help from day one. Mm. So it helps me understand what I'm going So I know when I have reached. I might not be outside, it might be in my room, but they know. Even my husband, and I, I think that I was also blessed with a very good husband. So he kind of gets me that, because he'll be talking, I won't even be here now. He's the, I'm in swats. <laughs> and he'll be saying, they're shooting God. That's all, I say yes. Sometimes I, it's, just, it's just the... You might you not know, even be following I might not even be following, but it's just that I'm not thinking of, yeah. I'm just relaxing. And it helps. You know, it just kind of brings calm. And after that, my nine o'clock. Mm. And they know, it's past nine, mommy is up. Mm. I can come back and you, because if you don't replenish, and, you, and you, you will get burnt out, mm. you know, mm. and you won't be able to go to work the next day. 
and, be, and and the last thing for me really is how do I unwind on Sundays? I sleep. Okay. So I mean, I'm, I'm practically yeah. uh, a lot of routine with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So my kids know that when we come back from church, um, depends on what service. Mm -hmm. I just come home. I don't eat. I don't cook. I don't. I just go and lie down and sleep. Mm -hmm. That sleep helps me prepare for the mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. If I don't sleep on Sundays, I'm setting myself up for a very yes, rough week yeah. because I'll start on Monday with headache and all that. So this. And it comes to self awareness, like we said. I understand my system. I understand that it is it is a strenuous weekdays, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, back to back. back. So my weekends, I try to ease up on. Like I said, women cannot do everything. Mm -hmm. So please don't go and compare. Oh, that person is coming. He's mm -hmm. cleaning the church. Mm -hmm. He's everywhere. Mm -hmm. You are not everybody. Yeah, you're not everybody. So choose your battles. Mm -hmm. I will. I will function in ministry, but I will not function in ministry that requires me every day. Every day. It will not work. Mm. So if I start to compare myself, so, oh, this sister, mm. you know, she's always there. How do I become her? I will run into problems. Mm. So I choose my battles. I know where I will, I know where I can, you know, like I can make a, a compromise today yeah. to be here. But I won't make, I won't be able to make this kind of compromise every, every Sunday. Every Sunday, yeah. I know myself, so mm. that's how... Amazing. I, so it still, uh, again, comes back to being self-aware. And you said something that also I think I will pick on is the point not to compare yourself um, with others, right? Because if, you, if you're comparing yourself with others, you would keep feeling like you're not doing enough, isn't it? And you'd keep trying to see how you can measure up. And that way you would eventually get um, burnt out. So thank you very much for that. So let's switch a bit from the work-life balance thing. And let's talk about finances, right? <laughs> I like to talk about finances. So I would like to ask... Um, Mrs. Madukwe, what is the role of a woman? <laughs> what, is, what is the role of, or uh, what roles, let me put it this way, because I don't think it's a straight jacket thing. What roles can a woman play um, in terms of the financial management of the home? Okay. Um, thank you once again, mm -hmm. Sister Debbie. Uh, for me, we're being practical, yeah? For me, I can play so many angles. It depends on what exactly we're talking about. When we talk about finances, are we talking investments? Are we talking having uh, the budget for the home? Are we talking uh, debts? Are we talking credit? Are we talking? I mean, it's 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 a vast it's a vast um, topic. But I think that I have been able to support, you know, the, the home by way of always having a budget. I try to have a budget for everything. Um, I am the more prudent one. My husband, you know, is, is very carefree with finances. But I found out over the years that... Um, if it's good, it comes back to me. I enjoy it. If it's not, it still, it still comes, comes back, back to me. me. So why don't I just try to uh, put some form of order, mm. you know, so there's a budget for basic things. And then, of course, there's a room for saving. Mm. Yes, you have to save. I, I, even for as little as going to the market, shopping for groceries, everything, I, I always have a list. I always write it down. I always write it down. Uh, my sister here talked about writing down the vision. I write every single thing down. Why? There is the uh, tendency to go overboard sometimes. And then there are, there are other times when you just realize, oh, there's a defect somewhere. This thing is lacking. And it's not like you they didn't even have the money for it. But just because there wasn't a plan, there wasn't a, business, there wasn't a budget, that's all time. On the other part, I also ensure that I do my research. Okay. So I'm coming from a place of I'm coming from a place of not having enough mm. to now having more than more. enough. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So those years, you know, back then, what I basically do is I try to find a compromise, not, not compromise now, 
for lack of word, I'm using compromise. But what I mean is, we're being practical here. Yeah. Maybe um, I realized that oh, going for a certain thing might be above my budget. Okay. I try to look for a lesser, Less, um, yeah, expensive. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it could be the size mm. of something. Maybe I wanted to get a bag of rice. Mm. I know that you can't get a bag of rice mm. now. I know children are still small. So I go for maybe half or quarter. At the end of the day, I do the plan. Mm. It has always been me. So we have to plan, we have to have a budget. And then always, always, because we are sacrificial human beings yeah. as women, as women mm. and we are natural born planners. Mm. For me, I've sacrificed a lot in the past. And that also helps, even though at some point I have a higher price than I mm. Maybe I should try to put myself first. Mm. At the end of the day, I don't compete. I don't look at what this person is wearing, Great. how this person is wearing, yeah. what she has done as well. Because I don't know her journey. Mm. I don't know what uh, she's doing you know, to get her money. I don't know what it is that you know, the husband is doing. Right? So, I always try to keep my my way of food, clothing, mm -hmm. for the children. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? I mean, I don't go to the party. Yes, but I don't go to the party. Mm -hmm. I go to the party. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. I get my food. I buy it. Mm -hmm. Great. I, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I just try to manage. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So there's really. There's really uh, a lot that a woman can do. Mm -hmm. It depends on who you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. I mean, your partner now. Mm -hmm. If it's transparent enough, mm -hmm. if it's honest enough to let you know this is what is coming in. Mm -hmm. I am been privileged to have that. So, okay, this is the amount that we have in the business. What are we doing? What can we do with this? Children's school yeah. fees. You know, the list goes on because mm -hmm. you can't exhaust this list. Mm -hmm. You just keep adding. Prioritizing. Mm. I keep mentioning prioritization. prioritization. <laughs> yeah. The truth is that you can't have every single thing you want. You go into the store mm. and you see this, you want this, you want mm. that. Look, it can't work. It can't work. <laughs> yes, well, it can't work. work. <laughs> it can't work. You just okay. have to learn to put the things that are very important in mm. front and then the other things will come behind. Yeah. yeah. So th thank you. Thank you so much. In fact, something you have said and something that she also mentioned while she was speaking is, you know, the importance of having, you know, an understanding partner, right? So to every single lady out there, um, well, I'm a single woman. <laughs> well, still single. <laughs> anyway, to every single woman out there, I think one key lesson from everything they've said now is choose wisely, you know. You don't want to get into a relationship or a marriage with somebody who is not going to be understanding, right? So, uh, I think that's, that's something I just thought I should throw out there and while we, we go on. But something, another important thing you said, which we've also said while we're talking about other things, is the need to avoid comparison. Because I think when I interact with women, there's just so much pressure, right, on the feminine gender, right? You want to wear the latest hair, you want to wear the latest shoes, uh, you see somebody wearing a, a, lip, a lipstick and you're like, where do you get it? Oh yeah, God is 14 and you're like, mm, no, but then you're like, but I love it, you know, and then you're thinking of maybe I should get it. And I think that's the importance of also working with a budget. I spoke with some people who don't really buy the idea of budget, but personally, I run on a budget every month. If I have like a finance book, so every month I write out what I want to spend my, my salary on because if you're not careful in the space of one month, you will just realize that you have spent all your money on things that are really relevant, right? So I, I, I think I agree with you. Running on a budget and avoiding comparison is really critical. So Mrs. Iweze, can you add to that? How Are there other roles? And why I'm still stressing this question is because sometimes you interact with women. Okay, in fact, I, I recently watched the movie and in that movie, you know, the man was complaining. He was feeling burnt out because he was spending so much money, you know, running the family, run, taking care of the children. And at a point, I think he had some financial problems and the woman was just so adamant. She felt like, my money is my money, you know. You, you, are, the, you are the head of the house. You should take care of the family my money is my money even if i will give you i'm going to borrow you you know <laughs> and honestly it's, it's reality i've seen women do that and i'm wondering is that the ideal thing right even though again we agree that not there's no one cap fit all right but what would you say you know what are the roles women should be thinking about playing when it comes to financial you know running of the home okay so again i'll try i'll try to be um, practical, practical. 
um, is your money your money? Or is it so, our money? So, so <laughs> let, let's me, come out. let me back a bit. Okay. And again, we're all a product of our environment. Okay. So I grew up with, um, in a family where my dad only did the big things. Mm. School fees, house rents, um, utility, uh, you know, nitrile. We used to have nitrile in those days mm. and all that. Those were big stuff. My dad never bought Maggi and Pepe and all that. <laughs> My mom was a teacher. Okay. So we never used to go to our dad to talk about food. Mm. It was our mom. Mm. But you know, my mom also had her own ideology. Mm. Food is yam, soup, eba, you know. Okay. Milk and milo uh, is not, not, not food. <laughs> so it's my dad who used to walk into the supermarket <laughs> to, get um, to get those ones. Those, okay. That's the only part of food mm -hmm. that, you know, was my dad's mm -hmm. um, bit. So... Um, growing up and coming into marriage. Um, okay, now in retrospect, I will say that young people should discuss it mm. before getting into marriage. I think it's one of the things that you should hash out quick before you make a commitment. Um, my husband is probably lucky that I came from that kind of environment, that kind of home. We never had that kind of conversation, but it was a non-issue because... I was working before I got married. Mm. So I never used to go back and say, bring money for food. Food was my bit. Mm. But I, so when they say school fees, I'll be like, what's that? What's that? <laughs> you understand? Because it's the environment. Mm. But ideally, now I, I, I talk about my environment. And I, I'm now, I want to merge it with my own my experience and my, and my opinion. Mm. I don't think that, um, I don't think, and it's personal. Mm. I think that if you indeed have a home, mm. it should be our money. Great. In the sense that, again, I'm talking about if we have a home. Yeah. And it all dates back to having a responsible man. If you guys are really having a conversation together, mm. and I'll give you a practical example. And I think I was just sharing my children late yesterday. Okay. And I was saying, do you remember the school where we started? Where I, sorry, look at that from Calabar. They were in a certain okay. school. Um... You know, when we're taking a decision for their school, there were a couple of things, you know, that was in play. And, you know, there was this new, nice to school. I was there at the opening, you know, British, all that, all that. I went to the opening, really nice. So I took their brochure, looked at the fees. I go home, you know how women are now? Be like, ah, everybody <laughs> wants to go to, you know, Emerald and all that. So I kind of took the pressure, go home. Again, I just discussed in the bedroom, like, this is school, sha. And my husband was like, eh, it's okay. Can we afford it? And I said to the children yesterday, affordability is about priority. Mm. Was the money there? It's yes. But was it the priority? Mm. Maybe not. not. Yeah. So we had an agreement. We had a property we were mm. developing. And my husband said, so Chidi, I know what we will do. This kid, school does not teach intelligence. Our kids are naturally intelligent. So we take a bit of the money. We will buy some home resources. So we bought a lot of, you know, things that they could watch at home, help at home. And we let them in the other smaller, more affordable school. And we did the rest at home. Why? Our focus really was to try and build up, finish the building. We agreed that once we are done with building and we could take our rent, we could stop paying rent. We would take the rent directly and put it in the school. And that's exactly how it, it panned out. So I think that, you know, contribution um, helps. Um, mm -hmm. Joint partnership, if you have a responsible partner, mm -hmm. and I repeat it again, because that's <laughs> where it starts. You have to have the conversation from the beginning. Okay, so because we, we are conscious of time, okay, and we would soon have to wrap up this session, right? So I, I'm, I would love for all of us to speak, but um, let's just bear with us, because we still have some questions that we haven't um, touched on. But I think another key thing that has come out again is have a responsible <laughs> 
have a responsible partner, you know, because that would also determine the level of sacrifice that you'd be willing to put out there on the table. And I think something important that you also said is affordability is about prior, uh, priority, right? It's about prioritization. And um, it doesn't mean you, you don't have the money, but it could mean that that is not what is number one on the list at that time. So I think it's really important. And I, I think overall, from what we've said, as women, we are partners, right? We are even help meet. And so it's, it's absurd to say, you know, your husband should take all of the responsibility financially. It's even more responsible, right, to say you're supporting. And I think that's what the Bible was describing when he was talking about the Proverbs um, 31 woman. That woman was doing amazing. You even think she was the one running the home. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for that insight into financial uh, management. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Fash, <laughs> I don't know why I like that name. Can you tell us, you are newly married, right? Um, you're barely a year old. Right? No, you're not even up to a year yet. So can you share with us, I mean, these are the mamas in marriage. <laughs> but you can, can you tell us, how have you been able to, or how have you been finding, navigating the early years of marriage? Um how are you achieving balance in your own view, in your own aspects? Because you're newly married, you're just getting to understand your spouse, I guess, and you're working. You're a medical doctor, and you also told us that you also run a transportation um, company. So, how are you able to get those things together? Hey, um, I'll start with before I got married. Because um, after I got married, a lot of people asked me questions about what they should do before they get married. And I was like, you have to get knowledge because you can't just go into it and say, if it's, uh, I can do it, uh, people are doing it, my mommy did it, my grandmother did it, I can see a lot of people doing it. I realized after I entered marriage that there are a lot of things that people don't see on the outside, that only you and your husband, you know, you need to gather knowledge because knowledge is important for the days that challenges will come. So you can know what to do, what to expect. You know that I'm going into this. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I've never been there. And you have people that have been there. It's important to know what are the things that happen the first few months of marriage. How did you do this? How did you cope with work? How did you cope with? So one important thing I think I did um, before marriage was I, I got knowledge. I, I talked to my mentors. My mom was of great help, really. My mom was of great help. These are the things that you would experience. These are the things you these are the things that people don't talk about. She told me those things. And I found them to be very true. Um, another thing is marry God's will. It gets why. <laughs> marry God's will, it gets why. <laughs> because there'll be days okay. that you would actually question your um your choice. No, because it wasn't God that so said you should go. Have you had those moments? I've had those Dr. moments. Fish, wherever you are, I hope you're hearing. <laughs> but, but really, I don't think there's any married woman here that will tell you that. Yeah, ah, you everything is just sweet. We love mm -hmm. upon each other. We don't fight. We don't do anything bad. I don't think that's true. So we've had our moment. But you see, the knowledge and the faith with which we started the journey made us go through those, those, those situations, those, those challenges. And we came out of it. Of course, there will still be more because that's just the way marriage is. Yeah. But yes, I got knowledge. Then um, um, having a supportive partner is very important. A partner that understands you. I know that I'm newly wedded. There are some things that is just getting to know about me. But having a patient partner is so important. He knows that this one I didn't know before marriage. Okay, now I know. I know that when this happens... It means that she's not in the mood. Okay. Don't just don't just crack any joke around. Just leave her alone. Just back off. You, you understand? And I'm getting to know things about him too. Mm. When he's in a particular mood, mm. as long as say I'm in work mood. Once he says I'm in work mood, he's in work mood. I just pass. <laughs> <laughs> I just go to the sitting room and I just watch TV work or mode something. Activated. And then he comes out of it and then we joke mm. and you understand. Mm. So having a Supportive, supportive partner. and understanding partner is very important. Mm. Then, talking about work, I think it's important to always plan your week and even your day ahead. And plan it with your partner and the people in the house. Let them know that, um, even for, for people that have children, let them know that I'll be having a meeting at this time, at this time. I may not be able to pick you up from school. I may not be able to come home early. This person will have to stay with you till I come back. Let them know so that they can read the mood of the day. So your husband tells you that I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here. You can already picture that he's going to have a stressful day. 
that is not the day to annoy him. <laughs> that is not the day to say something that will make him upset. That is the day to understand. That is the day to um to 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 empathize. Um, empathize. Yeah. That is the day to understand mm -hmm. and to just love up when he comes back. Like, How was your day? Mm -hmm. Give him food. Let him relax. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it's important to plan. There are days that I'm probably on call. I can't go home early enough. And he understands that ah, my wife can't come back early. Mm -hmm. He makes food. He takes care of the house. And then times that he's also busy, he buys the food and we eat. And mm -hmm. when we come back, we just talk about our day or talk about other things. Because me, being a medical doctor is a lot. <laughs> I know. So usually when I want to unwind, I don't want to talk about hospital. I've been yeah. one patient that was I about to die. I've been one person that came with something on the air, mm -hmm. trying to remove this. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about other things that make me happy. Mm. So that's that. Okay, so thank you. I think very, very critical. One thing you've mentioned is you need to plan for marriage. And I, I, I was just thinking about it two days ago. I'm like, okay, you know, you want to get into school. You take so much time planning to write an exam because you want to get into school. But then for marriage, you know, you just find young people walk into it like it's a piece of cake. Um, although I also am, I'm of the school of thought that no matter how much you plan, marriage will still surprise you, right? But I still feel like you would still do better if you had put some things into consideration, if you had spoken to people that have gone ahead of you and sought some um, um, counsel, you know, along the way. So thank you for that, um, those, those beautiful words. Um, just really tell us, you know, within a very short time, how, what inspired Elo Transportations and how do you combine that with your medical career? Uh, um, the idea to start Elo Transportation came like um, two years ago. So my husband just came then, it was my fiance, it was like, okay. Babe, based on our experience when we were in school, in students, you know, sometimes you have to move from a place to a particular place, and then you have to go to this commercial park, and then they squeeze you between so many people. The car is probably smelling, the journey is long, you're exhausted, and you're tired before you get to where you're going. And I was like, why don't we have a transportation company where we have vehicles that provide comfort, class, and is also affordable for people? You know, people want to move from a park. Take, for example, Somebody can drive, but she can't drive for a very long distance. Yeah. She needs a comfortable vehicle yeah. with a driver that can take her to where she's going for the meeting or whatever, yeah. and then come back, and her clothes is not rumpled. She doesn't have locust bin or anything smelling all over her. <laughs> the car is not hot, and you understand. Mm. And so I was like, wow, this is really good. Mm. And then um, we had a financial budget for everything. And with the help of God, we were able to gather finances to um, get some vehicles to start the business. Amazing. And then we named it Elo from my name and I name. guess, yeah. When I was thinking about it, I was like, hmm, Lo must be from Louis. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Um, amazing. So that also shows that as a woman, you don't have to be straight jacket. You can be innovative in your thinking and think on ways to bring on money, um, you know, into the family. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Last question before we just um, take the Second to the last question, let me put it that way, because I really want you to talk about um, compromises, right? I know you're about, you've spent like over 15 years, right, in, in the line of your work, Mrs. Wazy. And I'm just wondering, as you were climbing up the ladder in your, in your career, were there times you had to make compromises? You know, because I was listening to a great woman of God recently. <laughs> I'm sure we'll know her, but I, won't, I don't want to call her name. And she was saying at some point she had to halt her career because she had to raise her kids, right? And so she put everything on her. But now that her children are older, she's now finding herself going back to school, going back to do the things that she wanted to do. So in the rising, you know, in the career rising path, did you have to make compromises? If yes, how did you feel? And how did you handle that? Do you have any regrets? You know, let's just touch on that briefly before we sort of wrap up this session. Okay, so compromises. <laughs> oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot, okay. A lot. A lot of compromises. Okay. Um, so I, I think that one of the first, um, really was, um, so I, I 15 years working, 15 years, roughly 14 years marriage, but okay. I mean, 16 years of cut, of okay. courtship. I think the first compromise was, um, was not staying. So I haven't really stayed with my husband in that way. Oh, wow. We have always had this distance, long distance, long distance stuff. We're still in Nigeria, but... I mean, but we spoke about the career. Okay. Two th actually, two, two influences. One was my mother's influence. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, she had said, I asked God for this kind of child who will be able, who will grow in her career, 
okay. and still be a Christian. Mm. So there's always been, like you said, vision written. Mm. So every time I go back, I'm like, ah, Father, this is, I cannot, <laughs> this is not how to be career driven, mm. you know? Mm. So it was always in front of us. And then, mm. of course, second part is that I spoke with my husband about it. Mm. And we, we said we will spread, each of us had the ability to spread our wings and fly. Yeah. So we make we made some kind of compromises. That was my first. Not staying with my husband. The second major one was at some point I had to leave my to grow. Okay. I had to leave my family hmm. and come to Lagos for two years. Wow. And I left my kids. They were small. Wow. But like we said, understanding husband. Hmm. My husband said, I, in fact, the day they made me the offer in the office, I accepted before I came home. <laughs> okay. So I just got home and said. Ah. <laughs> When you, like they will say, Oh, <laughs> Tishele, really indeed. It's Lagos. So. Okay. And he's like, Eh, mm -hmm. what is it? What does it mean for us? For us. Mm. Partnership again. Mm. I said, Well, yeah, this is the path and all that. Mm. And he's like, Why not? Mm. Go. We spoke with the children. I, mo I packed up. I had I a, moved. was in 2017, I had a three year, a four year old. Wow. And I had just discovered I was pregnant. So wow. okay. I went. With the pregnancy. With the pregnancy. Amazing. I stayed in Lagos for two years. They were back home in Calabar. Oh. Second couple. But the last one, very, and you can say, oh, it's not there. Mm. Is that after a while, I said, no, I stayed too long out without my kids. I need mm. to spend some more time mm. before they disappear. Mm. Like it will happen. <laughs> okay. So I cut my hair. It was one. I, had, I hadn't cut my hair before from, child, wow. from childhood. I had the, my birth hair. Was, was still, was on your still what I had <laughs> up to, you know. 2020 mm. but i looked at it i didn't have the time to go to a salon for five hours make your hair. four hours i didn't have it thank god for weeks now oh mm, praise god praise god for weeks <laughs> weeks to the rescue indeed yeah weeks so to i the cut rescue. my hair i made some i removed some things mm. so i try and do okay just to maintain our health like we mm. say i gotta go to the spa maybe once in a quarter but those are very huge if you know me and my hair you will know it was a, it big, was a big sacrifice, sacrifice. You know, to get that out mm. and to just commit to spending Saturdays mm. at home with the children. Excellent. So, there will be times for compromises. I would have loved for all of us to share our experiences because, I mean, I'm having the best time of my life discussing with you because you're sharing really rich experiences that personally I can take home, you know, really useful points from. Um, so, final question before we just each tell us about what motivates us. Final question to you, um, Barrister Dockers. How, although you've actually touched on it a bit, you know, when you said faith is in the doing, but can you in just maybe three sentences just tell us how can you as a mother pass on your faith to your children? Because I feel like one of the greatest responsibilities of womanhood, especially if you're, I mean, if you're married, is tending to your children and raising them up in the way of God. Because if you succeed in every other area of your life and you fail at that, I don't think you've really succeeded, right? So I don't know, how do you pass on your faith? Um, to your children and ensure that they're also walking that path in just like three sentences. Oh, okay. Well, like I said before, faith is in doing. Um, without quoting scriptures, without quoting scriptures, it's just you have to live the faith. You have to live by example. You can't profess Christ. Like I, I said the earlier, who do we have faith in? We have faith in God. So we can't profess faith in God and then our actions are speaking otherwise. It has to be, you know, there's a scripture that says, um, be not hearers of the word alone, but be doers of the word. So as a mother, you walk the talk. You walk the talk. You walk the talk of faith. You don't just bring them to church. They, you say, you know, I, I personally, my children are teenagers. Um, there was a time I wasn't comfortable in what they were hearing. When I say what they were hearing, what they were hearing, what they were hearing in, in, in the place of a sermon, okay. I wasn't comfortable. So I said to myself, I, said, I want to hear, let them sit with me in church. And hear what I hear. That's why you see me in church, you see my daughters, you know, with me. Because I want to, I want to be certain what are they hearing. I want to be certain that when I leave the church and I say, oh, because we are from heaven, we are above. Hallelujah. They understand what, we're, mm. what I'm they talking about. They can relate with what I'm talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. I want to say, oh, 
we are talking about dominate. They can relate. We are talking about seeds. They can relate when I say, oh, you have to discover your seed. You have to defend your seed. You have to, you know, they can relate to these things. So it is, it is in doing. You have to walk that talk. You have to be a Christian in toto. By example. By example. That's, I think that summarizes it, it all. So you have to walk the talk. You have to walk the talk. Thank you so much for your amazing responses. Um, uh, you know, I would have loved to ask each of us what motivates us. But again, because of time. And I think in our speaking, in everything we have said, we have mentioned. I mean, we keep talking about God, 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 God. So it appears like God is like the center of it all. And we also keep talking about having supportive partners, right? I think that is also a great motivation. Um, you know, like I said, you want to quickly add something? Can you good, just... Good communication. Good communication. Not just communication. No. Okay. Good. That's between... Well planned out. That's between you and your spouse. Yes, so we, okay, excellent. So great communication. Let me make it. Let me take it higher. <laughs> great communication. All right. So thank you so much. And just to recap for our um, listeners, you know, very key points that we've discussed today. And I think we started off on a very great start with um, Barista Talkers talking about having a vision for your life as a woman don't just you know life don't don't expect life to happen to you by accident okay so have a vision you know like um, pa mama in church will always say people will not come and give you territories you have to claim those territories for yourself so as a woman even in your single you know your singleness start having a vision for your life and have it laid out you know many of us kept talking about the fact that we write things down and i think that is important because you have something to always go back to um to define your life and i think another very critical point that came out is the um issue of discipline and um, where we said you know discipline breeds consistency you know so whatever you want to see you have to start you know building that up from now and then um, that that would lead us again to the point about time management and um, because as a woman who is adorned you have so many aspects of your life that you're trying to bring into one bucket or one cup so you need time and um, you know excellent time management skills and something yeah prior, prioritization <laughs> Prioritization, even in the area of financing, you know, we said um, affordability um, is a matter, yeah, it's about prioritization, right? So you might have the money, but the question is, is that what is important at that time? And you need to be ready to make sacrifices as a woman. And then another thing we have stressed in this talk is that we need to avoid comparison. As a woman, please don't compare yourself with anybody. Your time will come. <laughs> you know, I used to joke there was a time in my life where what I could wear was a kumbi. You know, then in school, me and four of my friends will go we'll pick those shirts, pick those skirts, pick those dresses, wash them, iron them. You won't know, you know. But now I'm in that space in my life to the glory of God where you could walk into a supermarket and they say, This thing is. Nine, you know 30k and you're like mm, i can pay for it <laughs> you know so that time will come but now in this space and even when that time comes you still need to avoid um comparison another critical thing that you have said um you know in terms of raising children is that it is in the doing it's in the doing you know it's it's by example the bible was talking about how you know louis was able to pass on her faith to eunice and then eunice to timothy i'm sure it wasn't just about talking it was about this is what i've seen my mother do you know and i think when dr fash was talking she also made reference to that like her mom you know taught her certain things so it's really important so thank you so much for these amazing insights that you've given us and and, um, thank you to our listeners. We are so happy and we are so um, delighted to have you watch us. And um, I just want to encourage every woman out there as we wrap up this session um, and, you know, the commemoration of the Women's Day um, celebration. I'd like to say to you, um, every woman out there, whether you're single or you're a wife or you're a mother, you are amazing. You are awesome. I mean, you are you are the you are the prize. You know, I know you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to get a balance. It's okay. It's okay. You know, don't don't be like um, some persons who say they don't have a social life. Like you've heard us, our listeners today, they actually do have a social life. You know, so have a social life. Pamper yourself. You know, once in a while, stand in front of the mirror and say, you know what, Deborah, you are doing well. You are doing well. You might not. You know, there might be some lapses here and there, but you will eventually. You will eventually get there, right? You will eventually get there. You're a woman of strength. You're a woman of courage. And you know, as we just um, wrap up this session, we are just saying to you that you are loved by God. You are loved by God. And we, the TRC women, we also love you. We are rooting for you. And we want to see you make waves as you rise to the top. Thank you so much. And hopefully we see you some other time. God bless you.